Hello everybody out there and welcome back to another weekly comic book haul. Guys, lots of books this week and a couple of extras this week. For those of you that missed out guys, I hope you checked out our video. Mike and I um, did a really crazy video last weekend on Comic Frontline. It took a lot of decorating. It took a lot of work. And by decorating, if you guys aren't on my Facebook, if you guys, I don't think I posted on Twitter any pictures, but you guys really should check out the video we did uh, this past uh, Sunday, or it actually went up actually on Monday, I believe, because of the upload speed. But we went crazy. It involved decorating this room and then undecorating this room. But we had a really great time, and we got a lot of stuff that we're going to be reviewing on Comic Frontline soon. Uh, as far as the recaps, good news. This video should be in between some recaps. All the recaps, except for Transformers, should be up by tomorrow night, along with this video. The indie review will be coming on time, and hopefully the Big Two review will be coming on time, depending on, of course, reading. Um, but the only recap that will be um, another day or two would be... Um, apparently, my battery's charged. Uh, the Transformer recap will probably be closer to... Um, Tomorrow night, Saturday night, uh, before the indie review. Uh, me and Brad will be doing the live show for that. And then the recaps are going to stop for a while, possibly indefinitely. I don't know, but uh, it really just depends on time. That is something that is so precious and so, so short nowadays that, yeah, I have to ration it just right or else I'm not going to either one or the other. So we'll see I might reformat the recaps I have an idea but I won't be implementing that until October like I told you guys because all the recaps are on hiatus for now so let's get into the books this week because we got a lot of books <clears throat> and a lot of comments first off this week we got Supergirl issue number 33 the final issue of Red Daughter thank you God and the final connection to Red Lanterns Red Hood and the Outlaws, issue number 33. Mike continues his run on that. As well as the Punisher versus the Thunderbolts in Thunderbolts, issue number 28. Avengers World, issue number 9. Probably still no Dragon and still no Manipur, right? Figure. Oh, check. Magneto, number 7. That's all that I can say about it. Nice cover, though. Hulk vs. Iron Man, number 2. Original Sin 3.2. I believe there's only one more issue, maybe two. And then this is officially over. Now, I had to choose between two books this week. Um, there were a lot of $5 books this week. <clears throat> so I had to be very picky and choosy which ones I wanted. And there were two from DC. I felt this one uh, would be the better choice. And I'm actually glad I got this. I got Robin Rises Omega. It's a one-shot. Uh, I was It was between this or Harley Quinn in uh, the convention. I'm glad I didn't get that because I've been hearing kind of like, eh, reviews from it. This book looks promising. Original Sin, Uncanny X-Men 23. Uncanny X-Men makes its return to the Dark Avenger comic book reviews. Welcome back, Uncanny. Wolverine and the X-Men is going to, it's not going to end, but Wolverine's going to die soon. So, Original Sin issue 6, the killer of the Watcher is here. Although I kind of think we all kind of guessed who it was at this point already. All New X Factor, issue number 11. Two more issues to go for this. Scribble Knots on Mast, issue number 7. It will soon be over. The Pixel Cutscene variant for Mega Man, issue number 39. I think this is a really, really nice cover. We should get that one signed. If too bad Special Edition's over already. Sonic the Hedgehog, 262. <clears throat> so we got all those books out of the way. Now Mike got this and I kind of got him to... Could you turn that off please? I kind of got him to get this because um, it's a variant. It was only... It was limited to, I believe... Let me just fix this. There we go. 750. It is a new series. Wanted to try it. Uh, so this is the best issue to jump in on. Now, obviously, you guys are going to say it's not on this issue anymore. It's further along. But this is a variant. Only 750 in existence for God is Dead, issue number 7? Yes. Yes. Yeah, issue number 7. And we basically paid cover price plus a dollar, maybe? Not even, because it says 5 dollars I think that's how much Michael spent. 
So, um, it's a variant. Only 750 in existence. It's a good way to see if we'll like the uh, series or not. If we do, there's two trade paperbacks, and then we catch up to where they're at now. New 52 Futures End, issue number 11. Well, because it's not J. Lee, Batman Superman, issue number 12. Now, the solicits for September, uh, for October say J. Lee again. I don't know. Will I buy it on the fly just to make sure? Probably not, because I don't want to take a chance, because then there's going to be, you know, but for the most part, it's not J. Lee's art, so I'm going to give it a shot. 100th Anniversary X-Men, one shot. Batman Eternal, issue number 15. This is the granddaddy of this review. Grim Fairy Tales, issue number 100. This is a wraparound cover. It was so hard to choose which one we wanted, but this one definitely fits for me. And I know Michael would agree, so that's why yeah, I knew. we got this one. So Grim Fairy Tales is now at 100. Events in this book will change the Grim Fairy Tale universe. Uh, as we know it. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Wasn't going to get this, but due to the massive, amazing reviews it's got, I got to try it. Infinite Crisis issue number one. This is supposed, might be even crossing over with Smallville. So why not? I mean, DC did a really great job with, um, wow. Injustice. Why not try Infinite Crisis? Nova issue number 19. Now, I didn't get Suicide Squad issue number one, but I did decide to try Teen Titans again with Teen Titans issue number one. This is more of the Teen Titans uh, without Superboy. Maybe it'll work better. However, with Raven on the team, don't that. Uh, sorry, it's a long night, guys. And finally, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number 36. Guys, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles recap for last month should be up around this video somewhere. So this will be back. All the indie books will be back on the indie review and the big two books will be in the big two reviews. So I'm looking forward to doing all these books. The extras. Now for those of you that did watch the Christmas in July thing, I kind of made a little um, thing towards the end of the video where Santa Claus said um, we were going to... Um, there were three presents he couldn't deliver that day. Uh, and what they were, were, um, if you watch the video, you know. So, extras this week are we got the Transformers Voyager class Galvatron. So, this is also up for review. I am still on the hunt for the Voyager class Hound. But we got lucky and got this for 25 They want 40 and 50 and $60 for Hound. So, I'm going to wait on that. Oh, there is another one. Speaking of Hound, it's on the, over there. I forgot that one. And we got two more construction bots to complete the Dino Bots. We got construction box score bots scorn. No, it's the green one right there. The one, this one. Yes. Oh. So we got the red and construction bots slash Dino Bot slash. So we now have all the Dino Bot construction bots. I will be doing let's builds of that. And then speaking of Hound, I couldn't get the Voyager class, but I did find this in a store. It was very cheap, so I figured, why not? This is the um, Action Draw. I forgot what they called these. Uh, it's called Quick Draw uh, Autobot Hound. It still transforms. It still has things, but it has like a Quick Draw um, arm. So we did get Hound, just not as a Voyager class. I figured, why not? At least we got something. So as you can see, we're doing a lot of Transformers right now. This month will be Transformers. Next month's going to be the Turtles. And we'll see where we go from there. If we'll be doing more stuff. I found these new this new series I still got to show Michael called uh, Media Creatures or something like that. Which is kind of like Trash Pack except a little different. It's these little meteorites. Okay. Lots of possibilities. So look forward to a lot of things. And there's going to be a lot of things coming in September, October, November. Looking forward to what we're going to see at New York Comic Con this year. So let's get into the comments. Nick. This is the comic book call from last week. We're starting with that and moving forward. <coughs> Great haul as always. Chris, before the questions, you mentioned that you would read uh, Savage Hulk in trade. The first trade of Savage Hulk comes out in December. If I have the money, I will get it. Maybe I'll ask for it for Christmas. I'm looking for reviews to see how it goes. If it doesn't go good, I'm not going to waste my time with the trade or my money. 
Now, first, what is your view on the big three changes? Falcon becoming Captain America, Thor changing into a woman, and Arno Stark taking over as Iron Man in Superior Iron Man series. <clears throat> I think it's crazy. But, I know, I'm not going to get upset because this is Marvel, and as soon as the next Avenger movie or Captain America or whatever movie comes out, they're going to change it back. If I'm not mistaken, <coughs> dry mouth, if I'm not mistaken, the Avengers movie comes out next year. Usually, these types of arcs only last about 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 issues. That's about a year from now. That's about when the Avengers movie's coming out, and that's probably when the original Avengers are going to come back to being who they are. So, <coughs> will I be reading it? Probably not, because I'm going to be buying a lot of books as is already. I was going to pick up Thor, but five dollars for a twenty-five for issue twenty-five? I don't think so. It has nothing to do with the female Thor. However, I'm not paying five dollars for the twenty-fifth issue. When I saw that, I said, "Okay, I'm not doing Thor right now." Next, second. Happy that Batman and Turtles is getting better? Absolutely. freaking lootly Third, from Mike, are you looking forward to the new creative team for Green Arrow? Wait, didn't he <coughs> ask me that already? Huh? Didn't he ask me that question already? Or well, maybe what my thoughts show. are. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, some have said, you know, that's going to be, you know, good. So I'm looking at it in a positive direction. Hopefully that's where they'll go. And fourth, do you think that the reason for the new Deathstroke series is because of the TV show? Yeah, no. Yes and no. I think it might be because of the TV series, but also, um, I don't know, I think it's just a And the book. Batman video <laughs> game as well, the origin. I think they're just trying the series over again. It might be because he's so popular in the TV series, but I think that there was a little bit there <coughs> that DC wants to try again. <coughs> I need a cup of Pepsi or something. Want me to go get it? Sure. Okay. Are you still getting Swamp Thing? Because I'm... <clears throat> this is from PS3 Wii Geeks. Are you still getting Swamp Thing? Because I'm 13 issues behind. Uh, no, I dropped Swamp Thing. I'm sorry, bud. It kind of got bad for me. <clears throat> we are now in the indie review. And we are starting with Nick. First, what is your least readable comic from Image Comics and Dark Horse Comics? <coughs> least readable. Hmm. Image? If I, it's least readable, I probably don't read it. Um, from Dark Horse, I only read Star... Uh, I think that Halo was a bit hard. Ah, thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. Halo was a bit hard for a while, but I think things are going to pick up now. Second, what is your view on TMNT and Ghostbusters crossing over coming soon? Oh, yeah. I am absolutely looking forward to this. When I heard the announcement, I was like, that's great because Ghostbusters is ending, so Mike was upset. And I was worried what the next TMNT miniseries was going to be. Now I'm not so worried. I'm actually pumped for it. I can't wait. <clears throat> uh, here. Fourth, what if... A uh, known image comic character showed up in Walking Dead. That'll never happen. Then we got Dan. Great review, guys. I might have to look into tech jacket uh, trade in the future. Absolutely. Mm. And then, I don't know what's wrong with my voice today. KOD Atlante X23. Poor Dorothy. I agree. What happened to Dorothy in that uh, one shot? Mm. Man, Man, that was crazy. We're now in the DC Comic Reviews, and I know these went up late, guys, so I'm not expecting a lot of comments, and there's only one, and it's from Nick. First, if Jason Aaron wrote a series for DC Comics, which series would you guys like to see him write? <clears throat> Maybe Aquaman. See if he could bring Aquaman back up, because after Jeff Johns left, uh, the book kind of went... Pfft. Second, why hasn't Killer Croc, the Riddler, or Lucas Fox appeared in Batman Eternal yet? We have so many issues to go, Nick. Don't worry. Third, what if Adventures of Superman came out with a 100-page special like Legends of the Dark Knight um, does after the series ends? I'll be buying it then because it's still classic Superman and it's worth the money because it's a really good read. If it wasn't, if it, if it sunk, then I would drop it. Probably not. I'm a Superman fan. Fourth, what is your view 
<coughs> on the upcoming Green Lantern New Gods crossover coming out in October. I don't know. I don't read New Gods and I probably won't during this crossover, but I probably will read all the uh, Green Lantern books. Who knows? Maybe I'll skip Green Lantern uh, for that month. Because I'm not a fan of a big book. Uh, crossing over with a book that nobody reads just to promote the book that nobody reads. I think they did that with uh, one of Michael's books and, uh, yeah, Hawkman. Hawkman and Green Arrow. Oh. They did that a while back and it didn't go so well. Now we are finally in Marvel. Nick, first, why do you think Marvel is obsessed with putting a title of all new on their books? Because they want people to think it's brand new so they'll come and read it. Uh, but... All in all, the, eh, I don't even know anymore. Are you thinking of getting all new Ghost Rider number 8 because Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider is taking on the new Ghost Rider? No. Third, when do you guys think that Richard Rider is going to meet Sam Alexander? Probably in a year or so. Fourth, why is the main villains for Original Sin are C-Class villains? I have no clue, but I like it. Original Sin has been amazing. Can't wait to read this issue. The Crooks 420, great review like always. Thank you, Red Warren. I think the point of 8 of 8 in the 100th anniversary is for the readers to feel like they got an issue from the future, which totally makes sense in the book. And I thought Aunt May was supposed to be loving and caring. All right, let me go to the 100th anniversary first because I read this comment. I agree. I understand that they wanted you to think you're reading a book from the future, but even if it was from the future... If this is the eighth issue and Peter Park has been getting his butt kicked by the Kingpin and then all of a sudden he has a stick with fire and he beats him in one page? Yeah. That is... Wow. And throughout the entire issue, Kingpin was kicking Pete's ass. And then all of a sudden he goes into a forest, makes a stick of fire, and he beats Kingpin. Too easy much? Too easy much? Even Eddie Brock was more of a challenge as Venom. Plus it was part A to A and not one. I already answered why that. Oh. And I thought Aunt May was supposed to be a loving, caring aunt, but why does it feel like uh, that she's a mean and narrow-minded aunt when she told that Spider-Man was a menace when he uh, was saving her? Back in the day, Aunt May didn't like Spider-Man. Uh, so she was a loving aunt to Pete. But she felt that Spider-Man was a menace. She agreed, actually, with J. Jonah Jameson uh, in a lot of, uh, at a lot of points. And then pre-Brand New Day, when she found out Pete was Spider-Man, <clears throat> her entire viewpoint changed. And she actually wrote a very nasty letter to J. Jonah Jameson saying that he was a jerk for what he was doing to Spider-Man. Uh, but I guess this is a past issue. Currently, um, she feels the same way, but less vocal about it. Also from Red Warren, I really liked the 2099 issue number one. Is Liz Allen supposed to be evil? Yes. Yeah, she is. I think she 100% is. And she's going to be the antagonist in Spider-Man 2099, I have a feeling. Finally, Hannah Berger. Now that we know the next story arc of Thor will be about a female, the female Thor, will you still pick it up? I'm sort of on the fence about it. To be honest... Hannah, I wasn't going to get it anyway. When I saw that they were going to make a big deal out of the 25th issue by making it an oversize and $5, along with the other $80 worth of $5 books they're putting out uh, in the month of September, I decided it best not for me to pick up Thor, because as Thor is a good read, it's not worth $5, and after hearing this, it's not that I'm against a female Thor, they have done this before, if I skip the $5 book, 2 to 1, it's going to lead into, it's going to start off the female Thor anyway. So I figured, before finding out that Thor was going to be a female soon, I already figured I wasn't going to be picking up Thor. Now, out of the two books you mentioned to me a while back, Thor was your best pick out of the two. But again, with all the books I'm getting and will be getting, because there's a lot more number ones coming out from now until then, especially in August, it's just not worth it. Thor isn't worth it right now for me, and I'm glad I'm not picking up Cap, and I doubt I'm picking up Superior um, Iron Man, even though it's going to be written by Tom Taylor, who is an awesome writer. 
I just have no interest in anything that. Is. But then again, Tony Stark really screwed up during uh, Original Sin and during the uh, New Avengers thing. I'm not gonna say a hundred percent no to I Superior Iron Man, but as far as Cap and uh, Thor, I wasn't planning on getting those books anyway. So that's that, and that's it for this video, guys. Recaps are on the way there before and after this video and like I said by tomorrow night Saturday night before the indie review I will have all the review the recaps done and we will be done seeing the recaps for a long while um, So we can do Street Fighter Summer. That's why Street Fighter Summer hasn't come out this week yet Michael will be doing the first two chapters of Super Street Fighter. There are ten chapters. I'm gonna be doing five. First five? Yeah, okay. five one week and five. Mike's going to be doing the first five, I'm sorry. Uh, chapters They're very short Street some Friday. of them. All right. All right, well, I'm just Don't saying. Don't tell anything. Let them see it in the review. Right, I, they'll see it. And uh, that'll be coming up this week and also counting for last week. We're trying to do, like I said, a video a week. Uh, we will be doing the games for Brooklyn Boys next weekend because we have to redo our Xbox Live. So give us some time on Brooklyn Boys and we'll, believe me, we'll make up for it. So until then, guys, don't forget to check out Comic Related and Comic Frontline and Zone4Podcast.com. Together we are your number one source for comic related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. If you want to hear the guys on Zone 4 talk about all the changes to Marvel, the new Cap, Thor, and Iron Man, check out Zone 4's uh, episode this Friday. They talked about it in um, great detail. So um, there's some more extra stuff for you there. And until next time, everybody, don't. Uh, don't. Very good. Did that already. Take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and I'll see you guys in the next video.